So yeah, you want me to help you? I don't out. need to. Do they need to help? Yeah. <laughs> hey, girls! Yes? Shut up, please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hush! In Savannah, I said Savannah, the weather here is nice and warm. The climates of the southern brain. Yeah, it's my autobiography. You said to set the record straight. <laughs> what, what do you want to set straight before all of this is gone? Well, my history. Mm -hmm. um, my history is my history, just like yours and yours. It's what it is. <laughs> and um, there was so much. First of all, Midnight's a great book. Okay. I love Midnight. I loved it. When it first came out, my friend and I were on our way to Florida to see my brother to Fort Lauderdale. And I would read a while, and she would laugh, and I'd laugh. And I'd drive, and she'd read a while, and then she'd say, This didn't happen this last I know, but isn't it funny? You know, it's... Who cares? It's hilarious, you know? Right. So it, nothing bothered me. It was just that it wasn't accurate. So what? It's a book, well, you know? Kind of things weren't exactly right. Just the uh, lucky events or... Well, for one thing, and I think he puts that in there. Um, I was married and uh, doing adolescent alcohol and drug abuse seminars mm -hmm. in the 70s and 80s. And um, he has me here in Savannah before the shooting occurred, and that occurred in 81. And that's, of course, I wasn't here until Joe and I um, started to open the club mm -hmm. in City Market, Sweet Georgia Browns. And that was in 88 or 89, right. which was, I didn't even know who Jim Williams was, much less there had been a killing. I was about 10 years ahead of my time. I had the first open, privately owned house that was a tour house. I was the first one to say, this is an important house. I would like for you to know the history. I don't want it. It was almost torn down in 66, or it was the 60s. To me, it was just one of the prettiest houses in Savannah, and I wanted to stay that way for hundreds of years after I'm gone. And the only way I could do it, I wasn't independently wealthy, was to make money with it. Just about anything that could happen to a house happened. One year we had the worst storm we've ever had. And it rained and rained and rained for like two weeks solid, as hard as it could rain. Uh, I called from Atlanta and I said, how is everything? And my head dear God said, awful Nancy, we've got 42 pots out. There's four, four feet of water in the, in the basement. I said, oh my Lord, no. And it wasn't from the roof, it was actually from the eaves, and then the roof came down later. Okay, oh, it was something. You know, it was something. That's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's in the book. All my ups and downs and rights and wrongs and, and things I shouldn't have done, I'm trying to be just as honest as I can be. Okay. I was with him several times while he was real, real sick. And we... We got it together. He was, we, we buried all hatchets and, yes. you know, no one, no one needs to die like that. Mm -hmm. And um, he didn't mean to do bad. I promise he didn't. <laughs> Kathleen Yuckley, she walked into our club one night for her third job. We just quickly bonded and she became our manager of the bar. We were the only ones that were sober and taking care of things while everything else was going on, you know. And Kathleen and I were very naive. And we would look at each other and go, you sure this is all right? <laughs> <laughs> Joe had to go out of town one time. We didn't have any money to open the bar. She said, we're going to get it. I said, I don't know. We got to buy some alcohol and we, we can borrow the ice from Club One, but I don't know what we're going to do. So I said, let's get the silver. So we got the silver. We'd never been in a pawn shop in our life. So we walked in a pawn shop and pawned the silver and got enough money to open the bar. <laughs> Kathleen's one of my best buddies. When she first sashayed through Sweet Georgia Browns, I said, Joe, who is that pretty lady? You know, she did, the way she acted, the way she carried herself. She was so feminine. And he said, well, that's the performer next door. I said, really? <laughs> you know, because I was a bit naive about all that. 
And um, and she's a good performer. She's a great performer. I like Chablis. She is what she is. I like her. We've always liked each other. She appreciates me because I treated her like somebody before she was somebody. She used to come through Sweet Georgia Browns and we'd chat sometimes. You know, and I'm just me. I want to ask her, tell me about this, you know? <laughs> tell me all about, I mean, are you a drag queen? Are you a... You know, she told me the same thing she told told uh, Oprah. Uh, since it's you, Oprah, I'll let you say that, but no, I'm a female impersonator. <laughs> That's what she likes to be called. I hope I live long enough to push forward something that we will research ALS just as much as we do MS, because it's just as bad. My doctor, Dr. Bowen, says at the Mayo says that some people <clears throat> die immediately within two months and they gave me six <laughs> and that was two and a half years ago. Have you been able to find a support group nearby? Anybody that you can talk to? No. Just going in places like my sons and I were and daughter-in-law were. We went to my favorite place in the world is Orlando and Disney World. We had gone down and we were eating at a steak place called Old Charlie's and it's real good and I walked to the bathroom and the waiter came up to my older son and said I hope you don't think I'm forward or anything, but your mom is young and really pretty. He said, well, thank you. He said, but I can tell. Does she have ALS? <laughs> and we said, well, how did you know? He said, my mom has it. Just was diagnosed. Can I give you my mom's number and maybe your mom call her? She's feeling real down. And I talked to her a lot. And other people who, it's just so frightening, you know? Uh, because you just don't know where it's going to hit next, and I don't want to cry, because <laughs> okay. that's not part of it. Okay. It's uh, I just fear for so many people that feel so alone, right. and they shouldn't. I've had lots of things. I've had lemons. I've had to make lemonade out of, and this one's a hard one. But I'm trying my best to do the same thing I've always done, and. Um, with the disease right. and trying to help as I go any way I can to help people who have the disease, who have family members who have the disease, who, you know, what can we do to do something about this and on and on. And um, you just, um, I'm writing a book to try to do that.